Hi, I'm Tom Esty. I'm the leader of a capstone design team investigating concrete extrusion as it relates to additive manufacturing, or 3D printing. We're passionate about this project because we believe that if you can print a building, or part of a building out of concrete, you'll drastically reduce the time and the cost of a construction project. A major hurdle to the implementation of this technology on a large scale, though, is understanding and controlling the material properties of concrete paste within an extruder. We've paired a recent rheological measurement technique with our own simulation to create a system where a fresh concrete sample can be tested and imported directly into a simulation, enabling the rapid scale-up of the concrete additive manufacturing system, and at the same time providing insight into the flow behavior of concrete within an extruder. Our project goals are simple. First, to determine the material parameters of several concrete mixtures using a recent measurement technique and simulate the extrusion process using these parameters. And second, to investigate the nature of entrained air in the concrete extrusion process. Alden Grabitsky, our prototype design lead, worked with CAD software to develop a three-dimensional rendering of our extruder apparatus that was sent to a machinist for manufacturing and later by our design team to import into our simulation so that the simulated geometry matched exactly with the real setup. The apparatus that we design consists of a hopper or chamber held between a center plate with an interchangeable orifice die and a top plate with a ram. Concrete is loaded into the hopper and the top plate is reattached before extrusion can begin. And the entire apparatus can easily be disassembled for cleaning between test runs and the parts of the machine that contact fresh concrete are made from stainless steel to prevent corrosion. H. Simpson was responsible for much of the material sourcing, ranging from metal and hardware on McMaster Car to concrete constituents and admixtures that we sourced from a range of industrial suppliers, many of whom gave us academic discounts on materials. Our extruder was designed to interface with the Tinius Olsen Universal Testing Machine. The cylindrical clamp of the testing machine grabs and moves the ram. The extruder can then be operated over a range of constant ram driving velocities, and the testing machine records time, displacement, and force data. We varied the concrete composition, mixing time, and ram driving speed to create a range of flow conditions within the extruder. One of the reasons that this extruder setup is worthwhile is the ability to fit a series of data points taken from testing to a rheological model that of a Herschel Bulkley fluid, so the specific concrete mixture can be accurately simulated. A Herschel Bulkley fluid is a type of non-Newtonian fluid described by the stress-strain relation. It defines a yield stress below which the fluid will not flow, a consistency index K related to viscosity, and the flow index N, which dictates the amount of shear thinning or thickening that takes place with increasing strain rate. In the case of concrete pastes, the flow index is less than 1 and a shear thickening effect is observed. Once these parameters are obtained for a given mixture, the mixture can be simulated accurately. Ben Haste worked closely with both the design and prototype committees. He's shown here writing and editing one of our quarterly reports on Google Drive, where all our team material was kept and organized. Craig Finlayson led the development of our CFD simulation, which took place using ANSYS Fluent. The benefit to using CFD is that you treat the concrete paste as a homogeneous fluid. This allows for more flexibility in the scaling of the simulation, as the same fluid can be introduced to a variety of flow environments. We started our simulation by directly importing the geometry of the extruder from the CAD files used to manufacture it. This aspect of Fluent is another reason why we believe it could enable scale-up operations. As we developed our extruder design over the course of several weeks, we were able to easily update our preliminary simulation attempts by importing the most recent design files. Our first simulation, shown on the left, used water, as it's a simple fluid that was predefined in Fluent. Learning to confine and control fluid flow was a major hurdle in implementing the simulation, as none of our team members had previous experience with simulations of any kind. Throughout the semester, though, we increased the complexity of our simulation to include the concrete as a Herschel Bulkley fluid with parameters taken from literature, and discrete air bubbles as a second phase 
to see if any insights about entrained air could be gained. A velocity plot from one of these later simulations is shown on the right. Our experimental test results show general agreement with data from literature, exhibiting an initial increase of extrusion force with time until a steady state extrusion condition is reached and the force levels off. These test results involved concrete with short PVA fiber aggregates. Interestingly, when we performed extrusion tests with silica sand aggregates, our results were quite different. While extrusion took place, the force never oscillated around a constant value, but instead trended upwards for the entire duration of testing, for extrusion times up to 20 minutes. The residual concrete paste left in the hopper after these tests was noticeably thicker and unable to withstand stirring without crumbling. As such, the data collected could not be fit to the herschel bulkley model. The data taken for concrete mixtures with short fibers instead of sand, while generally agreeing with the data in literature, were not consistent enough to fit to the model either. We attribute this mainly to difficulties in measuring and mixing individual batches of concrete for each run. Our recent fluent simulation produced results that generally agree with our experimental data. We can see the same region of increasing force followed by steady state flow, and it occurs for a force that we observed in experimental testing. Due to the brevity and breadth of this project, there's much work left to be done. We note that the choice of aggregate can alter the fresh properties of concrete, but future work has studied the effects of average aggregate diameter, distribution, and composition on extrudability. While we introduced air and training admixture with two mixing levels, inconsistencies between batches obscured the relationship between air bubble size and extrudability. So an entire future investigation could be made in understanding the effectiveness of air and trainer in thick concrete pastes with low water content. We also believe that with more time, a custom simulation tool should be developed that doesn't depend on commercial products, where it's unclear what assumptions are being made. Finally, any simulation tool needs to be experimentally validated against a variety of concrete compositions and extrusion conditions. On behalf of my team, I'd like to say that this has been an incredible learning experience, and we all hope that this work can continue in the future in whatever way possible.